So I want to go over adding sources to your OBS platform. A source is simply a feed from either a video source or an audio source that's going to be a part of your overall picture that's going out to the live stream. So as you can see here, I actually have my sources set up for this video. Display is showing whatever I'm looking at. That's why you see this huge mirror effect going forward. The logo, my logo is not showing right now, but it is basically just an overlay of my logo for branding purposes. I use them on most of my free YouTube videos, but I tend to keep them off on my Udemy courses. Down here, we've got an overlay as well. So if I mo move it up a bit, you can see what it actually looks like. This is an overlay from Strexim. So they make very nice overlays, which you put in as a browser source. So let me just get into some of the different sources here. Right here, we've got my webcam. If I move it up, as you can see, it's layered. If I move it all the way up, you'll be able to see me. If I move it down, you will not be able to see me. So let's just go over the different types of sources that you can put in. An image, self-explanatory. It's adding an image overlay into your video live stream. It's great for branding purposes. An image slideshow, same thing. It's just an overlay of different images going in a slideshow fashion. Now browser source. This can automatically put any URL into your stream. So that's actually what I use for my Strexm overlays. It's from strexm.com and they use the browser source. They give me a URL, I plug that URL in and I can actually edit everything from the Strexm website. So this is custom, all these social media logos I put in using a browser source. Next up we've got a media source. You wanna put a little bit of a playing video or another image that's what you could do. So you can actually overlay video onto your video or a GIF or something like that. Text. This is simply to put some text over your screen. So you want to do it, say D D D D D Bum. You see it over there. You can change the color. You could also read from file. So if I click read from file, it will actually take whatever text I come in here and that's very useful for different things like um, displaying your latest donator or your latest subscriber on Twitch. Things like that could be done through text files. It's a bit more advanced, so we're not gonna get into it, but just so you know, that option is there for importing a text that has certain code that will display things in real time over your stream. Next up, the display. display display capture. That captures anything that you're seeing on your screen. That's why I've got this set up right now. And you can see the mirror effect going many, many times into the, into the distance there. Next up, we've got the window capture. So this is the most useful source that you're gonna use. Basically what it does is capture a browser source or a program or anything you want to do. So I can capture literally anything that's open on my computer with this and have it stream live into my OBS setup here. I'm just going to remove that. Game capture. I wouldn't really recommend using this. What it's supposed to do is capture a full screen gaming application, but it doesn't really work all that well. So for gaming, I would still recommend you use a window source. Video capture device. This is where you add in your webcam. So I'm going to add it right now. And you're going to see if I put the cam upwards, there I am. Hey, what's up? I'm going to change that again and go to the next one. Audio input. I use my Yeti microphone, which you can see right here. You can use any microphone source. One thing to keep in mind, make sure you mute all the microphones. So I have a microphone attached to my webcam. 
make sure you do, uh, mute that so it doesn't get an echo type thing going. Finally, we've got our audio output capture. That's just capturing audio from your computer screen. So if you're doing gaming and uh, you have a couple different options, you can either game with your microphone and your source music and sound effects on two separate sources, or you could you just mute the output and have everything coming through your microphone, through your speakers, your voice, and the actual sound. What I'd recommend if you're doing a setup like that is to keep them separate. That way you could play with the volume of each and you could turn down the sound effects of the game, especially if it's some sort of loud gunfire, and get your voice to really be the commanding thing within the live stream. Or vice versa if that's what you want to do. Last but not least, scene. This is where you could just save various types of scenes within the source. So these are my scenes. I've got one for poker, four table poker, one for two table poker, one for, well they're not very set up right now, but one's just display, one is for gaming. So you can see my gaming one has just got a couple of social media symbols, my webcam, but what's interesting is on this one, right here, The text file, the free type here, you could actually put in for this gaming thing too. You can actually put in your recent donator and your latest follower, and that automatically comes. And the chat as well. So this is a Twitch chat. There's no current way to put your YouTube chat inside, but the Twitch chat works really well. So I'll definitely update this course if I find a way to integrate YouTube chat overlaid, transparent like that, because it looks really cool. So that's it, those are your browser sources. I'm sure you might have a couple questions. Rewatch this video, asking any questions in the course discussion, I'm happy to answer. Uh, I've got a Facebook group as well that we could talk about it. And yeah, just get at me if you have any questions because I know that was a bit uh, of quite of a jump from the last video, video to this one in terms of learning curve. So if there's any issues at all, let me know and I'll walk you through it even further.